Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armory. This is where all weapons from Halo will be featured and analysed in detail. In this episode, we look at the beam rifle. Let's begin. The Type 50 sniper rifle system, otherwise known as the Particle Beam Rifle, or simply Beam Rifle, is a Covenant long-range weapon and the counterpart to the UNSC SRS-99 series sniper rifles. It is also the successor to the earlier Type 27 Special Application sniper rifle. The weapon has a variety of nicknames including PBR, PB, and Covenant Sniper. The Type 50 SRS is a battery-powered, directed energy weapon that fires ionised particle beams. The battery for the weapon has enough charge to fire 10 shots. The muzzle velocity of the weapon is 3,657 meters per second, or 12,000 feet per second, with a maximum effective range of roughly 1,500 meters, or 4,900 feet. When firing, the weapon has a near silent and negligible muzzle signature and inflicts wounds comparable to the 145 by 114 mm round fired by the UNSC's SRS-99 series of sniper rivals, capable of instantly killing a target. The Type 50 has little recoil when firing. The mechanism by which the beam rifle functions is unknown to the UNSC but accounts for the weapon's drastically different properties. The scope of the beam rifle is capable of 5x and 10x zoom, but also has the potential to induce slight nausea in humans who try to use it. The round section in the front of the handguard and trigger area of the weapon appears to contain the Type 50's quote unquote ammunition. After the weapon has completed its firing sequence, the section rotates presumably to chamber another round, so to speak. One variant of the weapon employed during the Battle of Installation 05 is capable of a battery capacity of 18 shots. The beam rifle has a barrel length of 82.55 centimetres or 32.5 inches and an overall length of 160.4 centimetres or 63.2 inches, weighing in at 18 kilograms or 39.6 pounds. The Covenant beam rifle was employed throughout the Human Covenant War alongside its Type 27 brother, though the Covenant made little distinction between the variants. They were typically employed by Sangili and Kigyar snipers, raiders and scout executors. It was employed during the Harvest Campaign, Battle for Arcadia and Battle for Entran Harbridge in 2531, however the weapon would remain a rarer sight throughout the war and Covenant Tactical Doctrine did not typically make use of the capabilities of the beam rifle. However, as the war with humanity continued, human snipers showed the Covenant how pinpoint accurate firepower could lead armies into disarray. This prompted a change in the final few months of 2552. With the beam rifle becoming selected as the most tactically optimal and ecclesiarchy blessed of the various Covenant analogues of the human SRS-99 and put it in an elevated production priority. The UNSC were unaware of the beam rifle's new precedence within the Covenant doctrine, unknown as to whether the change was spurred by a new direction in doctrine or local unit organisation. The fleet of particular justices Kigyar snipers employed the Type 50 Alpha beam rifle during the Battle of Installation 04 in September 2552, while shortly later the Prophet of Truth deployed an elite team armed with the Type 50 Delta beam rifle to hunt down his enemies during the Great Schism in the following October. During the Battle for Earth, the Type 50 would be employed by Kigyar snipers operating in New Mombasa, particularly during the night time. During the Second Battle of New Mombasa, snipers would operate the T-50 to great effect. During this battle, Kigyar marksman designate J011422 did not discard his point defence coordinate like most snipers did. By the time of the Battle of Voi and the later Battle of Installation 00, Jural Hane troops had replaced the Sangili in operating the beam rifle. Following the end of the war and the loss of high charity, beam rifle production slowed but did not stop. Though costly to create, manufactories on San Helios, Hestoros and Ain and other developed colonies continued to produce the weapon. The weapon is employed by several Covenant remnants, including Vatagajat's mercenary group. At some point, the weapon was one of many subjects of the UNSC report Machines, Material and Munitions from the Human Covenant Conflict 2525 to present. By this time, the UNSC did not yet know of the weapon's maximum effective range, awaiting procurement of working examples for investigative purposes, and cartridge type pending negotiations with the Swords of Sanghelios. Its ammunition is only known to be an ionised, accelerated hydrogen particle. Similar to the SRS 99AM sniper rifle series, the Type 50 is excellent at picking off enemies at great distances. Its pulses are very useful, passing through any type of material armoured or non-armoured. 
This makes the Particle Beam Rifle's over-penetration ability much more effective at killing a wide range of enemy infantry. As the beam passes through the body, the particles transfer their kinetic energy to the atoms and molecules of the target area. Upon impact, the area is rapidly superheated, cauterizing the wound at the same time. A direct hit on the skull area of a target will be killed instantly, and body shots depending on the area will be fatal in most cases. A rare, non-fatal strike to a target can also cause radiation damage and will require additional treatment, and near misses can produce second or third degree burns to light armoured targets. The beam rifle's relative silence, as opposed to the sniper rifle's loud bang, gives it a bit of a stealth advantage, however, this is compensated by the greater visibility of the Type 50's beam. In the context of Halo games, the particle beam's strength and lethality are weakened for the sake of gameplay. The Type 50 is also unable to perform rapid shots in quick succession. After two shots are fired within a second of each other, the weapon will overheat and shut down to prevent any damage to its internal components, temporarily rendering the weapon useless. The Particle Beam Rifle at maximum can only fire 18 shots before the battery is used up and the weapon must be replaced. Like its human counterpart, the Particle Beam Rifle is ineffective at close range combat unless its user is skilled at close range combat with a sniper rifle. The beam of purple light produced by the beam rifle is very, very easy to see, but somewhat quicker at dissipating compared to the sniper rifle's trail, as a sniper's position is more likely to be compromised because of this, requiring the sniper to relocate quickly before being detected. Beam rifle is a devastating counterpart and answer to the UNSC sniper rifle and its ability at cracking morale and psychological warfare against the enemy makes it particularly effective at pinning down unwary fire teams and picking them off one by one. As soon as the first guy goes down with blood and steam whistling out through the neat hole in their head, you know you're in for a long, miserable game of where the foxtrot did that come from. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, so Tenchi, the silent cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, and Neek, the holders of the mantle. Ty, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser, Silux, Reclaimer 216, The Revanche, Wolf Slim, and Andre, my Reclaimers. Zach, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesigo, Spartan A498, Guppy, Josh, Mickey, Bastion, Mulchar, Slithery Tube Dude, Night Rise, Sierra G059, and Alferis, my Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome, and all of this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo Lore Discussed to Insane Loves of Detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord, and if you really love the channel consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.